You're listening to 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts, the Dr. Chris Radio of Horror program. And if you're not listening to us live on 91.3 FM or on Radio Free America, hopefully you're, or on the Facebook streaming, which is also happening right now, uh, hopefully you're catching this on, a, on our YouTube channel in a week after this is recording. Tonight on the show, we have the band October Noir on the show with us with Tom, Jackie, Sticks, and Troy, who do vocals, keyboards, drums, and backup vocals and guitar. Thank you for joining us for the show, dudes and dudette. It's cool to be here. Awesome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, we have to give credit where credit is due to your uh, faithful band uh, follower, guru, fan who contacted us on the Radio Horror Facebook page. You talking about uh, Brandon? Yes, Brandon. Yes. Um, we appreciate him reaching out to us uh, about the band because uh, we we uh, we were introduced to your the your your guys' music and we will of course be playing your music tonight when this airs live on the radio too. Awesome, man! So we'll give you radio yeah, coverage. Very, very thankful for him. Yes, absolutely. Um, how did October Noir come together? Basically, it kind of started as a one man project. Um, it was uh, something. It's hard to explain, I guess, uh, having grown up with typo negative since 93, 94, and then everything that kind of unfolded from there, uh, we just didn't have that genre or that music anymore. So it was kind of a thing where I was like, well, let's crank up some stuff and see what happens. We'll throw it out there. If it does something, then it does something. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So it's kind of where we are right now. Could you also say we just don't have we just don't seem to have any type of like rock or metal music that anyone really really is uh, 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 flocking towards anymore either? Absolutely, um, everything is very mainstream, and that's what makes the money. Um, it's hard to really get the bands that used to come up. Uh, you know, you look at hair metal and how many bands spawned out of that, um, and you just don't have that anymore. It's it's funny you guys are coming on the show now because I think Rolling Stone just put out the uh, the the top twenty or fifty greatest songs of the twenty first century or something, and I'm like, uh, or the last decade, or last seven years, and I was like, I don't know what any of this is. It was it was <laughs> yeah. filled with nothing. It was filled yeah. with just garbage. Most of it. It was it was a lot of pop. It was a lot of R and B. It was a lot of rap. And listen, you like that stuff? That's fine. I don't care. It's just not what I'm into. And I couldn't pu- I couldn't pull maybe I could pull maybe one song out of that list or one band out of the list. I was like, ooh, yeah, that's cool. The rest I just I couldn't get into. So you guys are feeling a void that's much needed. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I've, I've had a few comments uh, about it so far, but uh, yeah, it's kind of where these other guys had come in. Um, to start doing the live show. So we're going to be traveling here pretty soon. I think September 15th is our first basically opening act. So right now it'll be around the Southeast. um, And then we'll try and branch up. You guys describe yourself as a combination of goth doom metal forged into a fusion of dark autumn melodies. Um, It's like the perfect band for Halloween, wouldn't you say? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It's the name. (laughs) Why don't we hear from some of the other band members as well? Jackie Sticks and Troy. Uh, where where did you find the band, and how did you get involved, and where did your music career start? Well, uh, me Troy, I've um, I've been playing around the southeast for a long time. I, I took a big a long break, um, and then ran across Brandon and uh, Stick or Tom and Sticks, and uh, got to talking heard his CD. He said he wanted to do some live shows. And, um, I was like, well, I'll do it. And I know a keyboard player, which is Jax. And this is, uh, this is your first band, huh? Yeah. Jackie, this is your first band? Yeah. Yeah. Where did you get your start in your, your music career? Was it like as a, as a, as a, as a wee girl and you were playing an instrument mom and dad wanted you to play, or was it something that you wanted to play? It was something that I wanted to play. I started out in elementary school taking keyboard lessons, and then my aunt gave me a piano, um, and I kind of taught myself from there. So not really a career, but (laughs) (laughs) but fun. You know what I just got done watching, and it was only because I, I was I was on a big Michael Douglas high because Ant Man and the Wasp came out this weekend. Um, the, uh, the the Candelabra movie he did, where he's Liberace playing the piano. Have you seen that? No. No. Oh, he he um he actually had to learn how to play the <laughs> piano, and he he did it right after he survived cancer. So now you get to watch movies. He's, he's giving you some education. <laughs> Um, What's up, man? This is Sticks. I'm the drummer. I've known Brandon probably about five or six years now. Been pretty good friends for a while. And, uh, you know, one day he showed me a CD. I didn't even know he played music, period. 
then, yeah, and uh, Tom showed me a CD, and it really sparked my interest because I didn't have anybody to play with. You know, I've been playing since I was three. I'm 29 now, so I've been kind of just solo acting it my entire life. So now that I got a band to play with, I'm like really excited. Tom, so it's gonna be good things. Tom, somebody's saying that they're uh, they still can't hear me, but I'm as loud as I can hear myself. Yeah, I've got you turned all the way up here too, as well, man. Okay. Again, anyone listening, this is being recorded, so if you can't hear it for whatever reason because Facebook streaming is what it is, this will play on the air, online, and on YouTube, just so you're aware. What are you guys doing for performances coming up? Uh, Currently, we have one locally in Pensacola for Chizuko. Um, It's a smaller venue, I believe, Um, and we're just going to kind of roll off of that. Uh, I think our set list is going to consist of Alpha Omega, uh, Trinity, Deep Woods and Volatile. Um, we're going to start there and just kind of start opening it up after that. You still with us? Yeah, I'm still with you. I was just waiting okay. for the uh, I was just waiting for the recorder to stop doing its little circle-y little thingamajiggy. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the one thing I, I, I like about uh, this being recorded. I can do uh, editing for any of the uh, the pauses in between. So. That'll work. Uh, yeah, definitely. Do you guys collaborate in the songs together, or is it uh, just one of you? So the initial album was just uh, was just me, and from there, uh, now we're working into the collaboration of everybody's efforts. Yeah, we're uh, shooting for October 2019, right? Yeah, next year, October of next year will be the next album release, so that'll include in everybody's function um, as far as that goes. I think Lips Like Sugar was our newest one that we just released, and... Uh, if you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah, that was more of a collaborative effort uh, for that, that one was, as well. Yeah, that was really our first collaborative recording. Now, I'm not an expert of how the music industry works. I just happen to be a knowledgeable guy about like music history and bands and, and so on and so forth. But uh, the one thing I've gathered from like bands who have come on the show who have tried to you know get their name out there is they get involved with like films and video games have been big successes for them. And I'm not talking yes. like studio projects like the Avengers. We're talking like low budget independent stuff right at the moment. Um, right. Have you guys done anything like that? Are you guys looking to do anything like that for like a? Oh, yeah. a Kind of, not like a triple A game, but uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was gonna say not like a triple A game, but like a low independent game that you could like make a song for or lend a song to that would get more reach than you could possibly do yourselves being in Florida. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the big things for us is uh, we're b- real big on taking um, local ta- other local talents and trying to incorporate things within what we're doing as well. So whether that be photography or um, other people who are wanting to kind of sit down and record something we could help out with, um, or even art, anything of that nature, we're, we're uh, real, real big on. Like right now, we're trying to locate people to do more of a community style video for one of the songs. Oh, like a music um, video. Yeah, which but is also at completely the same dead. time, you know, we want to be able to get the music that's out there to the people, and if they want to use it for, you know, independent films or or even video game development and things like that, we're all aboard on sharing it as best as possibly can to, to help anybody so it seems like music videos went the way of the dodo bird as well yeah they have um the big thing with that is going to be for the youtube side uh monetization of course uh as long as you have enough followers to make that happen yeah but, uh, yeah that's it, it's a very hard niche to fall into because so many people have control over that community right now People love the technical aspect of things. Uh, why don't you each explain a little bit about the equipment that you use and what type of guitars they are, what type of keyboards, and you know the company and stuff. Uh, love people love hearing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> right. Let's see. And Jackie, you want to take over on this one for the keyboards, or I'll just do it for you. Um, one of the things I did was I bought uh, basically all Schecter guitars and basses um, to work with. That was one thing that was really cool about us meeting up because that's all I like to use and that's all he liked to use so they're like oh yeah this is going to work perfectly the, the most awesome part about it is you know he went and bought this really awesome electric drum set for me so I can jam <laughs> out as hard as I want and nobody yells at me and then when we do shows I bring my real drum set and then I can really well out but yes yeah, yeah basically the, the drum sets are rolling um, TD I want to say 25 KV it's one of the more expensive uh, electronic jump sets, but mesh heads. Yeah, it's it's a good setup for the drums. Uh, keyboard wise, we're using a Core Dim One, which is uh, a late '80s model keyboard. Um, 
for one of them, and then the other one's just a Yamaha uh, basic keyboard. I, I forgot the model number on that, but uh, yeah, guitars and stuff are all sector. Um, we run Line Six for heads and cabinets Sustainia. for the guitars. Yeah, Sustainiacs are a big thing with us uh, for note holding and sustain or whatever. Um, and the rest of it again is just the uh, let's see PV bass equipment, uh, the Tor 700 head, uh, Boss pedals mm -hmm. for effects, and really just the sector guitars and basses. Let's uh, do what we can, I guess. I was curious. Uh, I believe that I'm assuming this is uh, you, Tom, sitting in this chair with your band members behind you. You're holding this staff of a goat head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good Halloween prop. Is that your, uh, is that like, um, oh, God, it feels like I'm an idiot right now. Uh, is that like Alice Cooper on stage where he's got his riding crop or whatever? Do you use that to, like, command the audience? <laughs> uh, actually, that's a really good idea. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to start nice. using it. <laughs> um, it was kind of like we, we, we were doing a photo shoot, and for that particular image, it was there. Um, it just yeah, it just happened to be there, so we picked it up and I just held it. Well, there you go. Now I gave you something that you can start mass producing when you become bigger and start making some money on. Just start like giving those Absolutely. things out. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and if that happens, I'll just you know be sure to give you the shout out for uh, the perfect idea. I would uh, greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We always like to ask some of our guests uh, three uh, three very important questions. What is the weirdest fan experience that you guys have all had, either together as a band or individually? Um, what is your favorite horror movie, and do you guys collect anything? And you can, and each one of you need to answer the question too. Okay, so no yeah, silent well, majority yeah. sitting in the back waiting for Tom to answer everyone's questions. All three questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to answer all. Three. Yeah, you have to answer all three questions individually. If you don't actually have an answer, that's totally fine. But no more sitting in the back letting Tom answer. Do you're doing your dirty oh, work yeah, for you? Oh yeah, no, it's all good. Um, <laughs> favorite horror film. I would have to say Freddy vs. Jason. I don't know why, but that would be it. Um, things I collect be drum heads. I collect drum heads as a drummer. That makes sense. Now, what was the first question? Uh, and this oh, is worst this, experience. And this is sticks, right? Yeah, this is okay. sticks. I would have to say the worst fan experience would probably be for a fan that I was playing drums for a local rapper, and she offered to buy us all drinks. And so she saw how much we drunk, and then she didn't want to pay for it. Well, you know. Obviously, we didn't pick that tab up, so that would probably be the worst fan experience I've had going both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Troy? Troy? I don't think I've ever had a bad fan experience. I love fans. Yeah, no, like... It doesn't necessarily like mean because you love your fans. Everyone's had, like, a... Cr had a not so much a bad, but a weird... Like, yeah, like a weird fan experience could be that can be that as well. It doesn't have to be a bad fan experience. Not not uh, not all fans are are crazy. They can't. They could be. It depends on what they're, you do. They're more fun if they are. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite horror movie. I don't know. I think maybe currently, it's Cube, like the original Cube. Oh, interesting. I never hear that brought up. That's cool. The Freddy uh, vs. Jason was I also rather unique very, too. Yeah. So cool. Oh, like very just, the, just the way they made it, yep. you know? It's like they had this one small set that mm -hmm. they just changed the lighting. Yep. Did, yeah. did, you, did you ever see that yeah. movie uh, Splice? Splice, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian Brody and that girl from um, um, Dawn of the Dead remake create that, uh, yeah. that kid who morphs into a hot chick that morphs into a dude that rapes her. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, the freaking frackin' hell? And yes, we gotta we have to watch our, our language. So I say frickin' frackin' in place of another word. <laughs> frickin' uh, frackin'. Frickin' frackin', I say in, in, in place of the F word. <laughs> uh, Jackie, what about you? So yeah, um, I, I collect guitars and rubber Oh, okay, ducks. cool. Like uh, rubber ducks? Yeah, <laughs> like we've got a shadow box, like... Dude, I, I, there's this game at Sam Spun City that it's a little, you push the ducks out of the tubes game every time. Oh, boy. <laughs> We've got, like, these giant rubber ducks. That's hey, forget about cool. the weird fan story. Let's roll with that. Yeah, right. wait a minute. <laughs> I think I'm, a, I'm my weirdest fan experience, actually. Uh, but, um, yeah. Jackie? The weirdest fan experience, I guess I'd have to say <laughs> I ran into a guy who um, in the mall, I was telling my doctor that, oh, my doctor, I was telling my daughter that we had band practice. <laughs> While you were lying on your back telling your psychologist, no. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you said um, doctor. I was making a psychiatry joke. I, sorry. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, no. So he was completely thrilled. He was able to Google our band name and it popped right up, which I didn't quite understand, but he was thrilled about it. Um, so for horror movies, I guess I'd have to say anything Stephen King, like It or The Shining. Um, and I collect salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> <laughs> there is the one you have to watch out for with the salt and pepper shakers because you never know what she'll put in them if you guys piss her off. Right. <laughs> we usually don't let her cook for us. So oh. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't make the one woman in your band be the cook of the band. That just <laughs> back to the kitchen. Bad precedent. Bad precedent. <laughs> and then, what's your favorite horror movie? Oh, horror movie. Um, probably no, not horror movie. Horror. I horror, horror movie. Yeah, horror. not horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I didn't get to name my favorite horror movie. <laughs> you did. Yeah. It's a you did? Uh, no, I said movie. Oh. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, I like Stephen King, It, The Shining, that sort of thing, or like the Paranormal Activity movies. Oh. I really like those. I like those. Why do you like the Paranormal Activity movies? I mean, Jesus Christ. What just... <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be a good question. Good. <laughs> We won't okay. We won't we won't harp it on that too much. What's funny is that if you've seen the movie Hereditary, I compared the movie Hereditary to the plotline of Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem and the plotline of the Paranormal Activity movies. Which someone said there was a plot in the Paranormal Activity movies. I'm like, yeah. Once you get past the first two, once you get into like the third, fourth, the spinoff, the Mexican one, whatever it was called, and the sixth one, there is like a plotline involving like witches and like destiny and like the firstborn son and all this goofy shit and you're like what the hell happened to this plot line <laughs> <laughs> hey actually i don't, I don't know. think uh many people watch horror movies for plot lines so. uh but uh, it's funny you mentioned the paranormal activity movies uh the woman who played katie kate uh whatever her name is i think her real name is katie um is going to be um at her very first horror convention coming up you'll have to go on a scarecon.com to find out where it is and then tom yes um I don't, I don't know if I have any weird fan experiences quite yet. Uh, everybody's been pretty down to earth so far. So I can't really comment on that one. But uh, horror movies, uh, we're going to take it a little bit old school here. We're going to go with the original Evil Dead films. Um, yeah, those were always good. Uh, Interview with the Vampire, if you, you consider it the horror film. Um, I actually like the Evil Dead remake, too, for whatever odd reason. That's the very... Chainsaw Hand. Uh, Are they having a new series yeah. going? Yeah, Evil Ashford. Yeah, Ashford's Evil Dead. Yeah, we said that's been canceled since then. So. Yeah, it got canceled after three seasons. So. That's sad. What do you collect, Tom? What do I collect? Uh, <laughs> right now, all I have been doing is collecting musical equipment to get all this crap together. So that's true. <laughs> that's where all the funds and finances go. Where are you guys going to be performing next? Um, so right now we're looking at just the, the next lineup of shows to have in Pensacola. Um, but we are going to branch over to, um, Tallahassee, I believe, Florida. Uh, we've got some shoot up to Birmingham, yeah, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas. Uh, Austin, Texas. Back to Hippie Hollow. Yeah. See what we can hit in Atlanta, things of those areas. So we haven't done a whole lot of research on that yet. We've just been really busy trying to get practices in and making sure that everything's nice and tight and ready to go for when we do start. Cool. Well, why don't you guys give away the social media and where, you, where they can find your music to download on iTunes or buy a CD from you? Correct. Um, yeah, through Facebook. Um, that'll have the uh, – usually carries the links. But, yeah, iTunes is up. Uh, Amazon's up. Uh, I know it's on Spotify, uh, YouTube Music. Um, and then we've got the, like a free web store where you can order the physical copies of the CDs. And then, of course, also uh, October Noir uh, on uh, uh, is it at not it's at it, blah sorry at October Noir Music on Facebook. Correct. Oh, 
Well, thanks, guys and gal, for coming on the show with us. All four of you, Tom, Jackie, Sticks, and Troy, really appreciate it. Uh, we will, again, play your music just before this airs. And uh, we look forward to uh, more of your content coming out in the future. And hopefully one day you can make it up here to Massachusetts where we have Salem. Maybe you guys can book a gig in Salem. I would absolutely love to book a gig in Salem. We will do, And it needs to be a Halloween gig. Yeah, I mean, we plan on doing the East Coast before we head too far out west. So we're, we're going to start in the southeast, and then we're going to spread up the east and Gulf Coast. Cool. Again, guys and gal, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, man.